I just want to go over how to set up a set driven key in Maya. And so this is, well, it's useful for a lot of things, but ultimately what a set driven key is, it's a way to um, link one attribute to another or even to many others um, in different nodes or the same node um, to kind of optimize a, a rig or an animation strategy. So for example, I've got this kind of rough hand rig here and I've got this controller object and inside this controller object I have this thing called pinky curl and you can maybe see it a little more clearly here in the attribute editor under extra attributes and right now it's set to negative one pinky curl and I can scrub this and let me put it at a better angle you can see it's controlling the rotation of three separate joints so I could achieve the same thing by animating those three separate joints, but by using a set driven key on a, on a new attribute that I've created, I can automate the process and animate all three things together. So let me just set that up quickly for you for another finger so you can see uh, what I mean. So we'll do it for the index finger here with these three joints. Um, and I've got a, a control object here that I'm just adding these extra attributes to, so it's easy to select them. And they will also show up here in the channel box. You can see pink curl. So uh, in the, I'm going to use the transform node so it shows up at the top, top of the uh, channel box. I'm going to go to attribute, add attribute, and I'll call this index curl. Okay. Um, it's got to be a float because it's got to have fractional values and decimal points. Um, scalar, just because it's not per particle. And then the minimum and maximum and default. Now, these are totally arbitrary. This is kind of uh, setting the range uh, of numbers you can put in. So on the last one, you may have seen that I went from negative 1 to positive 3. And I just chose those just because the extension so at zero the pinky is in its rest state like that at negative one it hyper extends so it's being lifted up backwards if you kind of stretch your hand backwards get that feeling and but it's you can see it's not moving that much and then by going all the way to positive three you can see that the flexion of the finger is much greater so i could have set it to negative one zero and one but I kind of wanted to get that idea that the difference between um, rest and flexion was much greater than the difference between rest and extension. So this is really up to you how you want to do this. Anyway, um, so let's do for this one index curl. I'm going to do the same thing. So the minimum will be negative one, the maximum will be three. You probably want to keep this consistent between fingers if you are doing it for fingers, just so when you're animating, uh, it would be predictable. And I'll say OK. And now this should show up here. Now, just to be very clear, this is not connected to anything yet. This is just an empty slider with a name and some values. But we have to connect this slider to the rotation of these joints here. So uh, the way to do that is, well, I could select the joint and do a set key, but I'll do it through here. So if I right click on the name of the attribute, I can say set driven key. If I access this through the channel box instead, I can, if I right click, I won't get set driven key. Instead, if I'm on a PC, so if I control right click, I'll get set driven key. And it opens up this dialog box where you have to load up at the top the driver, so the thing that you as the animator want to change, and then the driven, the things that should result from that change. So right now, the master control and that in index curl attribute are in the driven. That's not right. It should be the driver. So you have to add the driving node and then select the driving attribute. And then you have to go through and select the different objects you want to be driven. So this is a bit tedious, but anyway, you have to do it. So we'll select the end joint here, or the second to last joint, not the very end one. So load driven, and I happen to know this is rotate X, but I'm going to double check. Yep, it's rotate X. So I have to indicate that it's rotate X that I want keyed. 
So just to be very clear, I'm going to uh, grab this controller again, open the attribute editor, and I'm going to copy out the tab just so you can see uh, what I mean here. So index curl is at zero right now. So I want to key that relationship. So when these three joints are not rotated at all, they're at their rest state, I want to key them in that position. So select the first one, got these selected, key. Select the next one. Now I have to load driven, select the attribute again, and key. Select the last one, load driven, rotate X, and key. Okay, great. So now yeah, the order of operations here is important. Now I've got to change the value of the driver to negative one. And then I'm just going to select these three joints and just rotate them you know, backwards into extension a bit. So let's say that's what I want for extension. And now I just have to go through and key each one of these. So select the top one, load driver, sorry, load driven, rotate X key. Select the next one, load driven, rotate X key. Select the next one, load driven, rotate X key. So let's see. Yep, so that's working. So now we want to change this to its max value. And then let's put all of these in position. It's easier to do them all together. So we get the overall position that we want. And then we'll just have to key them separately. Okay, so again, I'll start here. Load driven, rotate X key. Select the next one, load driven, rotate X key. Select the next one, load driven, rotate X key. There we go. So now I've got a simpler animation scheme. So if I wanted to animate this hand doing something, I really have to animate only one attribute to get this uh, finger curl or flexion and extension. Just one final note. Um, you can go in and adjust these after the fact because these are called set driven keys for a reason. They're actually keying, but it's not key framing, which are keyed against time. It's keying one attribute against another, but they still show up in the graph editor like this. So we'll have a curve like this saying that when this value is um, right. So, <laughs> sorry. In the x-axis here, we've got it's going from negative one to positive three with the default state at zero here, and then as we move up and down in these, the value in the rotation of each of these joints changes according to this curve. You can adjust this curve if you want to, to make it act differently, change the interpolation between. So if you don't want it to ease into this position, um, I guess you could change this to make it a bit snappier, or you could just change that in the way you key the set driven key attribute. So just to, again, make it very clear, if I wanted to animate this now, the set driven key is just part of the setup. If I want to keyframe this index curl, I can do that, right? So I can set this to zero. I'm on frame one. I can set a key on this now. And then, you know, over 20 frames, I can curl that, set a key. And now that's animated. So you're keying this attribute that was set up with set driven keys, just to make things even more confusing. Anyway, it's a very simple thing to do. Uh, it's just a little bit tedious, but in the long run, it can save you a lot of time depending on what kind of rig you're setting up and what kind of animation you're doing. Anyway, I hope you find it helpful. Thanks.